I used to live a sinful life and my life was very, very sinful, like a lot of you out there, like most of humanity before we come to Jesus Christ. And I used to live a life of sin, but the, the, the deception was that I'm just living my best life. You see, that's the deception of the evil one. He changes things to make things look as they're not. Like when he deceived Ad, like when he deceived Eve in the Garden of Eden, he God told Eve, do not eat from that tree or you will surely die. And then the serpent comes and says, did God really say that? You know, no, God didn't say that because if you eat from that tree, your eyes will open and you will be like God. So he's offering sin and making it look like something good, something that she needs, something that will benefit her. You see, the reason why we sin is because we believe that there's a benefit in that. You see, Eve would not have bitten into the forbidden fruit if that forbidden fruit did not look appealing to the eyes. So be careful when things look appealing to the eyes and you know it's not what God wants. Eve would not have bitten in into that fruit if it did not look appetizing to her flesh. So we looked appetizing. Be careful of things that look appetizing when God is clearly speaking against those things, you know. And then the serpent comes and says, no, 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 you won't surely die. Because when, because when you eat from this tree, your eyes will open and you will be like God's knowing everything. And so she said, oh, so I'm going to gain from this. Be careful of when God speaks against something and you, you go against God because you think you're going to gain something from that. It's all a trap, trap, trap. It's all empty promises, empty promises, empty promises. Because you set, the second you take hold of that forbidden fruit and bite into it, you will see just how empty that promise is. That's when the curse comes upon on, on you. That's why all thing, all hell breaks loose. And your forbidden and the forbidden fruit of your life could be fornication. The forbidden fruit of your life could be idolatry, adultery. The forbidden true the tree of uh, fruit of your life could be drunkenness, could be sodomy, could be anything. Whatever that could be jealousy, could be pride. Whatever the forbidden fruit of your life is, God is telling you: if you don't eat from that tree. You can eat from any tree. Don't eat from that tree. And such was my life before I came to Jesus Christ. I was living a life of sin, sin, sin every day. Every day, every day was just all about sin. I don't remember a day passing where I was not living in sin. And the deception of the evil one is that, like he deceived Eve, was like, no, that's not how it is. No, that's not what God meant. No, that's not sin. So he might take sin and change its name. So, for example, fornication, that is a sin. He might change its name into, oh, come on, you're only dating. Oh, come on, that's only love. Oh, come on, that's only intimacy. Or he'll cha change the name of lust and call it, that's love, you know, when he knows that's lust. And so because you don't see it as lust and you see it as love, you buy into that fruit. But because it's not love, it is lust and the, the, the devil's lying to you, you're biting into sin. Or he takes fornication and says, that's intimacy, that's love, that's dating. And because you don't see it as sin, because the whole world around us is programming us with sin and giving it a socially acceptable name. And so you bite into that fornication thinking it's dating, it's love, it's intimacy, it's... We're just spending time together, you know. And so you bite into the curse, you bite into the sin. You see, the curse is in the sin the forbidden fruit which eve bit into god didn't wait for eve to bite into the fruit so a curse can come up on them and they can enter a fallen state the fallen state of mankind the no the curse was in the sin so the fact that she bit into that fruit put herself in the curse so we bring destruction upon ourselves it's not God doing it. We bring it upon ourselves because we enter into these sinful lifestyles. Most of, most of mankind do not know that they're entering into a sinful lifestyle because, what's going on there? Because the world around us, it's in the movies, Hollywood movies, it's in the music, it's in the cartoons, it's in the video games, it's constantly being programmed with, um, devil worship worshiping the devil living making the devil's ways acceptable and because we don't know that there is sin or we've been conditioned in such a way that we don't even care we're biting into these forbidden fruits every day we're bringing curses upon ourselves curses upon ourselves curses upon ourselves right 
sicknesses, diseases, demonic bondages, witchcraft, you name it, it's there. It's in the world. We bring these things upon ourselves. And such was my life. I was constantly living in sin, whether it be fornication or drunkenness or drugs or lying or whatever, whatever it was, it's all sin. But the deception was that everyone's doing it, you know. Um, my dad was always against fornication. He was against sex outside of marriage, very much against it. And while we, I was young, it was like, okay, you can give me your opinion. And I have to live by that. But once I'd grown up and I'd moved out, I had my own apartment, then it was like, well, the whole world is doing it. That's just how it is. It's, I, it's not that I knew I was living in sin because I didn't. The deception was I didn't even know I was living in sin. I did, I, my, my brain couldn't understand that fornication was a sin. My brain couldn't understand that drunkenness was a sin. My brain couldn't understand that getting high on drugs, whether marijuana, heroin, cocaine, whatever it was, my brain couldn't understand that it was a sin. I knew it, 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 I knew it wasn't good because doing drugs can kill you, but that's as far as I knew. But the fact that it was a sin, my brain couldn't understand that. It couldn't grasp that kind of understanding. Why? When you grow up, the Bible says, grow up your kids in the way they should go, or like in the way of God. And when they grow up, they won't depart from that path. Okay? So if you're not bringing up your children in the way of God, and when they grow up, they, their mind won't be able to grasp the word of God. Their mind won't be able to understand the ways of God. That fornication is a sin. It's like, what? The whole world is doing it. I, I'll probably look stupid if I'm not doing it. But that's just the lifestyle. It's normal. It becomes normal. And that was it. And that's, that's what I was doing. And that's what a lot of you are doing out there as well. Fornication is a sin. Drunkenness is a sin. Drugs is a sin. Sodomy is a sin. Lust is a sin. You know, we see a lot of people out there lusting, lusting, lusting. Lust of the eyes, a lust of the flesh. You say, no, but it's love. No, but, no, but I love them. That's not love, because love doesn't go and get. Uh, is that what's going on here? Love doesn't go against the ways of God. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love casts out all fear. Perfect love casts out fear. Love doesn't need to do that chasing. Love is peace. Love is patience. The Bible says, "He who does not know God does not love," because. He who does not love does not know God, for God is love. So you can't say, I love, but then you're going against the ways of God, because God is love, love is God. So obviously obviously that's not love, that's lust. And because it's, 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 it's in the Hollywood movies, where it's all about love, it's all about seduction, it's all about sexuality, and they call that love. And they're seducing one another, and they're fornicating, and they're lusting over one another. And then, and then they call it love, but that's not love, that's lust. And then our teenage daughters or our teenage sons watching these Hollywood movies begin to become brainwashed with that kind of behavior, seduction and nudity and that kind of behavior is love. So now they go out and looking for love and they start to, to exhibit these behaviors and then they call it love. But that's because they've been programmed by the TV. If only they knew the truth that that is sin and that is lust, it's not love. That's the work of the devil. And it's in the music as well, especially the rap music, this worldly music, you know, guns and drugs and, and all of that kind of stuff. And you, you see 13, 14 year old boys, girls out there on the streets and they're doing all of that stuff and, and they think it's cool. They think it's, you know, normal. They think it's success. They think it, that's life. It, that's life for them. What they don't know is that's the work of the devil. And in their, in their music, it's all about drugs. It's all about guns. It's all about murder. It's all about sex. It's all about things like that. What we're doing, in essence, is we're helping to push, promote the work of the devil. In essence, what they're doing is making the devil's ways normal. And then they, 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 then they hear the God's ways and they think, what language is that they're speaking? What? What? You know, or you hear a preacher preach the truth and they call it oh, hate speech. That person's being hateful. 
And because they've been programmed to think that lust is love, or what is good is bad and what is bad is good, they hear the preacher preaching the truth and they say that's hate, hate speech. And they hear someone who's preaching or doing the devil's work and they say that's love. That's love. The Bible says, woe well to him who call, who calls good evil and evil good. Woe well to him who thinks light is dark and dark is light. You see, lust, you call it love. You see people killing their babies in abortion. You see, that's pro-choice. That's, that's love. I love myself. I love my life. I'm just doing what's best for me. Self-love. See? It's distortion is programming. Fornication is called dating. You know. They're doing pride marches now. Going against the, 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 the ways of God. Man and man. Woman and woman. Programming children from a young age, nine years old, ten years old, eleven years old, teaching them to cut off their private parts. But girls, teenage girls are cutting off their breasts. Teenage boys are cutting off their private parts. Because I identify, I was born a man, but I identify as a woman. I was born a woman, but I identify as a man. Hang on, if tomorrow, if I didn't, if I, because I'm living with a couple of cats here. If tomorrow if I identify as a cat, does that mean I'm a cat? If I go to any psychologist and I say to him or her, listen, I identify as a cat, they're going to say that I have a mental disorder and put me in a mental institution. But if a teenage girl identifies as a boy or a teenage boy identifies as a girl and then go and cut off their private parts, that's not a mental disorder. That's just love. It's, it's just we're, we're proud about it because it's love I believe people doesn't matter what I believe anyway so you get the picture this is all the devil's work right and we need to be very careful I was living this kind of lifestyle too where I was living in sin and lying and stealing and I was in and out of prison and I was homeless and I was on drugs and I was manipulating people and I was trying to control people so my lie wouldn't get found out I was abusing people I was hurting people and I didn't care as long as I got my way I didn't care okay selfish that's what that is selfish you see it's selfish God created a man and a woman I'm going to go back to homosexuality now for some reason God created a man and a woman so they can get together and reproduce a man a man is different to a woman so when a woman is with a man, she's different to that man. She's not the same as him. It's different. When a man goes with a woman, he's different to that woman. They're not the same. They're different. There are things that a woman that are different to a man, things that a man are different to a woman. They go together. And what they're doing is learning one another, helping each other grow, growing with one another. When you get a man go with a man, it's like he's going with himself. You see, because a man is different to a woman, but a man is the same to a man. So when a man goes with a man, it's like he's going with himself. When a woman goes with a woman, it's like she's going with herself. What is that? I just want someone that's like, it's just selfishness. That's just selfishness. Right? It's just pure selfishness. You need to, we need to be very careful when the devil comes in and deceives us, like he was coming in and deceiving me. I was thinking that I was hurting everyone around me, and I still couldn't see that I was living in sin. It's just like, it's my life. Just let me live my life how I want. I'll be the... Well, why not just tell a pedophile it's my life so it's your life so go and uh, uh, sexually abuse any all the babies you, that you want it's your life and so then they turn around and say yeah, well, as long as you're not hurting anyone then it's okay well guess what everything you do has consequences you think you're out there fornicating getting drunk or doing drugs you're not hurting anyone you're only hurting yourself you're not hurting your parents you're not hurt, hurting society You're not hurting the people you could have saved if you were in Christ, but you're not saving because you're too busy destroying your life, allowing Satan to come in and destroy your life. These, This is the work of the devil. These are called demonic bondages. Demons are at work in your life. If you think you're free, you're not free. It's literally the work of the devil. You're literally pushing darkness, manifesting more darkness into the world. And you think you're free, you're not free, you're in bondage. You think you're happy, you're not happy. Because you put on a happy face when you're out there in the clubs. You put on a happy face when you're around people. But guess what? Sometimes depression and suicidal thoughts can look like this. 
How many people are taking selfies, big happy faces, just hours before they commit suicide? These are demonic bondages. Just because you claim to be happy doesn't mean that you're happy. Because I've been there, done that. I was saying, I'm so happy, I'm so happy. And so this smiley face in the clubs, drinking as soon as I entered the house. That misery, that depression, those suicidal thoughts. Those sleeping pills to get me to sleep so I can just stop thinking. You know, you know you're miserable. And the reason why I know you know you're miserable, first of all, I've been there, done that. The other reason why I know you're miserable if you're living a life like that is because this life of sin is designed to keep you miserable. You can't be living sin however much you say, I'm happy, I'm happy. You can't be living sin and happy. You wouldn't be chasing a life of darkness like that if the innermost parts of your being were satisfied. So this is telling me the fact that you're chasing a life like that means that you're not satisfied. It means there's an emptiness and you're chasing these things, these sins, whatever your choice of sin is, you're chasing these things to fulfill an emptiness that is within and the more you're not fulfilling it, the more you chase it. So you get a superficial sense of relief. But it, that superficial sense of relief is quickly gone because it's superficial. Because it's superficial. So now you need to go and chase more to keep receiving that superficial sense of relief that always, is always short-lived. And you become like a hamster on a running wheel. Chasing sin, chasing sin, chasing sin. Because you're trying to fill in an empty void inside you. That can only be filled in by the very one who created you, God himself. The human heart is designed to be satisfied only by God. And unless you draw close to God and leave that old life behind, draw close to God and allow him to satisfy your heart through an intimate relationship with him, you will always be miserable. You will always be depressed. You will always live in fear. You will always have anxiety. You will always chase sin. You will always be like a hamster on a running wheel. You will always put that smiley face when you go out in public or take your selfies. But the second you enter the four rooms of your bedroom, that's when everything starts to hit you so hard. How miserable you are. How lack of how much lack of peace you have how much you're lacking love how much you're lacking attention how much you're lacking validation how confused you are and so you need to knock yourself out some of you with sleeping pills because you can't handle it you can't handle the truth you can't handle the life that you're living and your, your life is just miserable and i tell you it will continue to be like that even if you find a new sin tomorrow a new way to push this down push things down suppress everything inside there will come a time where you've pushed so many things down push 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 down so many things you can't push them down anymore they're choking you that's demonic your only way to freedom is jesus christ i've been there i've done that i'm talking very confidently from experience okay this is a testimony jesus saved me with that being said, my book, Spiritual Warfare, I've got lots of testimonies in here as well. Who is God? New Age of Cult to Jesus, uh, Worldly Life of Deception, and This is Grace. All can be purchased below. If this ministry is blessing you, be sure to bless back. Donation link is below. God bless us all.